So here it is uh, a day or two later and I have taken everything apart. I have leftover pieces of white cotton that are not really nice and probably not going to use those for anything. So those go on the uh, scrap pile. I also found in each one of these pieces that you take apart you're going to find different things. I found irregular cut pieces that showed to me that this piece has been taken apart multiple times and re-sewn multiple times. There are pieces that are of irregular widths. Narrow pieces are normal, but some are even more irregular than usual. Some have been machine stitched together to lengthen pieces that were at some point cut. It may have been made um, longer or shorter, depending on whatever the circumstances were for this garment. I uh, found the, the lapel piece that I mentioned earlier. So this is uh, stained, discolored a little bit. It's old. It's going to get used for other projects after it's been washed. And there were a couple of pieces of it. And then, of course, just lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, lots of this beautiful woven cotton. It's not a really high-grade weave. This is not a kurume katsuri. It's more like... Um, two katsuri's that you'll find a lot on the Japanese market. Bingo katsuri and kurume katsuri. The kurume is far more desirable. It's beautiful. It's got a great hand. It's very soft. It's drapey. Bingo is more of a mass-produced uh, cotton weave that was very popular in early 20th century. Sort of a mass market product. Very stiff, which was desirable in a lot of ways, but now it, it just means it's not a lot of fun to play with. Very stiff cotton, kind of heavy, but still, I mean, if you're looking for katsuri, bingo can be what you're looking for. Not great for certain applications. If you're doll making and you're dealing with something that's more of a small scale, you probably want more of the kurume than the bingo. Bingo is going to be blocky and stiff. Kurume is going to have more flow to it. When you're buying katsuri, it's great if you can touch it, unless you're buying it online, in which case, you know, I try to photograph things showing a drape. But if you have the ability to to play with it a little bit, see if it's got the texture and drape that you want, that's a plus. So what I'm going to do with these right now, I'm going to run them through the wash and then let them hang dry so it may be another day before I can press them and then roll them and you'll see what I've got. So I'm going to wash these right now with uh, another piece that I've taken apart so I'll have two great places, two great fabrics to, to play with and uh, oh yeah, you'll end up with a pile of really interesting indigo thread. Yeah, that goes in the garbage pile too, because if I collect those, the rest of the household complains, except for the dog. The dog likes them. And I will have this ready and up to you very shortly. So it's like almost 10 o'clock at night, and this is when I get the most work done. I usually shoot in the morning because the light's better, but I came across something and I really wanted to show you because this is part of what I've been talking about as far as the hidden length of sleeves. So I'm taking apart this beautiful shibori yukata covered in stains. It's The work on it is beautiful, but the staining is not. So this has not been washed. It's um, It's got a great design with these chrysanthemums and stripes. And I just took off one of the sleeves uh, and I looked at it and I was so excited to see this. Now I mentioned that sleeves before the war were longer and an unmarried woman wears longer sleeves but once you're married and also after the war sleeves were shortened or during the war too. So this helps me either date or identify this yukata it possibly was owned by a younger woman, or also it could predate the war. It's all hand sewn, so which is great. The sleeve length is pretty standard. It's kind of short. It's actually, oh, I have a tape measure right in front of me, so I'm going to measure it and say it's uh, just about 18 and a half inches long, which is roughly 47 centimeters. I know most of the world is metric. The Americans are kind of an anomaly. But what what made me all happy was to see at the bottom of it, you see there's all these extra little layers. It's because this was stitched in. And what I'm going to do real quick is see if I can uh, unpick some of these stitches that tacked it up and, and we'll see. 
just how long it actually is. See, this is part of the treasure of taking part, taking apart a piece, a kimono, or in this case, a yukata. They're very often gently tacked in. People don't want to waste the fabric so nothing's cut. You'll find these are just hidden. The off chance that they might be able to let the sleeve down again someday. So here it is inside out. Full length now revealed along with a lovely dust bunny. And the verdict is... 60, 69 centimeters, 27 inches. So that's like an extra nine inches, although some of this is inner seam, so figure eight to nine inches was folded up. So all of this was folded inside like that to make it an acceptable short sleeve. Anyway, that's the next piece I'm going to work on. i got to pick this apart for the next couple hours and then wash it tomorrow morning and dry it out. So, project you were curious about that I said I was going to share. Um, I'm going to go get that. Okay, so it was never supposed to take a month to finish this video, but it has, and I apologize. I have some of the fabrics here. I have this nice checkerboard. Oh... Looks fabulous. Rolls right back up into one of those. And the shibori, which really cool. I can keep finding, every time I run my hands over here, I'm finding uh, knots and bits of thread from where it was originally tied. And considering how old this is, that's kind of, kind of crazy. Anyway, you can see the detail. Got some of the makume wood grain style tie going on there. And Lots of other types, which I can't rattle off the top of my head like I used to. I haven't been studying in a while. I apologize. Anyway, this one's pretty sheer. Good for summer. So that's those. I'm going to have some stills so you can get a closer look at those also. Uh, we've got some shows coming up. I'll be in Houston for the International Quilt Festival coming up in late October, early November. Hope you can come by for that can't make it to Houston. Uh, I do multiple shows in California, in Northern California mostly. I'm up in the Bay Area quite an awful lot if you want to come by and see the studio. Um, email me at kimonomomo at gmail.com. And if you have any other questions or suggestions or something you'd like me to cover, I, I have a list that I will be covering this fall. I will have lots of updates coming up, including how to open your sashiko thread and what to do with it once it's open so you don't end up with a ball of yarn that looks crazy. All of that and more coming up very soon. I'm going to sign off and say thank you for watching and um, subscribe. I've got more videos coming up and would love to teach you what you need to know. Thanks so much.